Okay, and we're back with part two of how to use Ableton for theatrical sound design. In the last video, I showed you how to use drum racks to give shape to your sound files. In this video, I'm going to go into dummy clips and dummy automation. Um, and I'm going to move pretty quickly. Uh, so, I've got the same sound files I had last time. I'm going to drag those over into a into an audio track. Actually, I'll drag them into MIDI, MIDI track, because MIDI tracks turn into audio tracks when you put audio on them. Um, and we only need, need two tracks for this one. I'm going to go into my input-output, and I'm going to send the output of this track, the first track with the audio, into the second track. So, let's just re rename that real fast. Uh, automation. Sometimes people name it dummy, I'm going to name it automation. So I'm going to audio to the automation track, and notice that renamed over here. Okay, I'm, I can take the monitoring off, but I need to put the monitoring on over here. Okay, and turn the external off. There we go. Okay, so now it is receiving audio from this track. So if I play, a, if I play anything over here, it's actually coming through on the second track, on the automation track. So if I turn this down, it changes the volume of the original track, which is over here. Okay? So, how do we create automation over here? Well, the first thing that we have to do is we have to create a, a container for the automation. So what I do is I just create a blank clip. I'm going to create a four measures of nothing, okay? So the way I do that is I just, uh, let's see, let's turn this off. So nothing's going to play through it. I'm just going to press record. And you can see nothing is coming through. All right. So there is four measures of blank audio. And um, remember from last time, we need the quantization up here to be at none. And I've already set all of my global quantization so that each of these follows the global right there. So it's going to follow whatever's in here. We wanted it none. Also, if you watched last video, you saw me put the master clock at 60 BPM. And the reason to do that is so that every quarter note is actually a second. So it makes it a little easier to count. Um, so that this is a second right here, and a second here, and a second, and there's four seconds, five seconds. So now we can kind of ballpark the duration of our automation. Okay, so I'm going to rename this automation clip um, Reset. And Reset is going to take the volume information and put it back at zero. So I just clicked on this, which turns the envelope to that, and I've got to put a little dot here. Um, Ableton wants a little, a little handle to know, like, okay, yeah, really, go back to, to this level, which is minus 0.5 dB right now. Now I'm going to copy this empty track, this, this container for automation track, a couple times. Uh, there's one, two, three. Okay, I'm going to rename these so I can know, so I can have a template of what I have for later. So I'm going to rename this um, six second fade. I'm going to rename this one 10 second fade, and this one a 14 second fade. Okay, so we want the automation to be on the track volume, which is this thing here, and it's going to start at its maximum level, and then over the course of six seconds, fade down to nothing. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six seconds, and that is how we make our volume automation curve. The next one is ten seconds, so that is eight, nine, ten. So that is a ten second fade out. And here's a, four, let's see here, 12, 14 second fade out goes right there. So, now if I were to play 
this bugle call, it will play through this track at maximum volume, but if I press the next key, the next scene down, the automation will take over and smoothly fade it out. Oh, my volume's still off. So here we go. So there's our maximum volume. Press, oh, what happened? Well, there is a stop button here. And of course, if, there's, if the track sees a stop button, it's going to stop. So we have to remove the stop button. Let's try it again. And here's enter again. And you can see the little red arrow here slowly fading out. Now, notice that there is still audio being passed through. We just can't hear it because the volume's all the way down. Um, unlike in QLab, you can't... Oh! What happened there? Well, it looks like the um, track is looping. So after, one, after 16 seconds, it's going to loop back and hit that automation again, automation again unless we turn it off. So now it's just going to stay at that level. I need, to, I need to turn all these off loop. There we go. Okay, let's keep playing around here. Uh, so the next one, we're going to do rain. I'm going to need a reset. So I'm copying and pasting here. You need a reset on every track and every sound file to get the level back to where you wanted it originally. Um, so this one is going to start the rain. I'm going to remove the stop button after it. And then the next fade event is going to fade it out over 10 seconds. So here comes the rain. And there it goes fading out. And of course the audio is still still going. We, we can't really turn that off until it sees another stop event. Okay, so that's great for fade outs. So that gives us what we want. But what about for fade ins? There's really two ways of doing that. What you can do is you can warp the file. So press warp. Go back to your, uh, your speaker here and you can automate right on the track, right on, right on this, this sample. So let's automate right up over the course of eight seconds. So that rain now the reset's going to stay the same. It's just going to stay at max level, but now the rain has an automation curve starting from zero to maximum. So, there's one way. There's the first way. And that's pretty good because you're putting it right on the sound file. Um, the other way, of course, is to put it into the reset. So I'm going to delete this automation here um, and make the fade on the reset instead of, instead of it just being a flat line, we'll put the fade here. So the automation lane is handling all the automation. So again, pressing enter. Because the audio is being passed through this track, the automation is affecting the sound over there. And then I can fade it back out. And now that we have an automation lane, it can control anything. We can put effects on it. We can um, make it uh, send to the return tracks. Um, because I just touched A here, I can send this to the reverb, so I'm going to click on that and go ahead and turn the reverb up on this track over eight or so um, seconds. So you can see the level starting up over here, and we just added reverb to it, and it's clipping over here. But that's how you do that. You could also um, throw the reverb, let's just drag it over, onto the automation track and do it with wet-dry. So I'm going to reset. Uh, I have to go get the 
return. I'm going to kill the automation. And I'm going to do it instead directly on the dry wet, which is right here. So this will be an insert effect, so it will affect the entire sound quality. So pressing enter, it's turning up the wet dry amount of reverb. So that's how you do that. It's pretty powerful, it's pretty easy, and once you have a um, collection of fade out uh, clips that you like, you, you can just copy and paste. You just copy the, the fade out onto the next track. Um, this is really good for longer cues because um, the audio that you're playing is being streamed from the disc, which computers are very comfortable doing. It's not pulling any audio from RAM. Um, so this would be good for pre-show or any sort of uh, longer cue like that. Um, I think that's about it. My name is Joel Abbott. I'm a sound designer. And uh, this has been how to use Ableton Live to do sound design using dummy clips. <laughs>